Our next guest has his fingerprints all over Canadian broadcasting history, witnessing power and politics colliding firsthand and navigating through it all to get results. Phil Lind has spent 40 years as the ultimate right-hand man to Canadian media mogul Ted Rogers, earning the nickname the abominable no man. He's now sharing his lessons learned in life and business in his new book. We welcome Phil to our studios this morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay, so tell me about this nickname, the abominable no man. What is the power of saying no? Well, well for one thing, Ted had a million ideas, and some of them were better than others, put it that way. <laughs> so and, you want to be the one to step in and... Well, and, and then he wanted them all implemented, and... He would say, come on, let's, let's, let's go on all of these. And I, some of them were, were, you know, a little off the wall. And I had to sort of say no to some of them. But, I, but if you said no to Ted, that meant yes. So, so for Ted, so he, it, you say no, double down. <laughs> so we would divert and... Um, kind of uh, say, well, this is a better idea than that one, maybe, and that kind of thing, but, because you can't, I mean, an idea man like that, you can't do everything, and if you did, you'd be, you'd be bankrupt. Well, you obviously had some pretty good ideas. We know the success of, of Rogers sure right across the country and now south of the border as well. There's a piece of advice that you share in the book, uh, which was, always act in business like you've got a million dollars in your pocket, which I love, but I want to know why that resonated with you. Well, very important because it, it, you say what you, what you mean and, and you mean what you say. In other words, most people go along with what's, what's, what, what is going and sometimes that's not right. And so if, if, you're, if your gut tells you this isn't right, then you should speak up and say this isn't right. You shouldn't just go along with it to get to have your job the next day. Speaking of speaking up, there has been so many uh, so many movements forward in in terms of uh, equality within the workplace uh, for for women, uh, and and you've always been a supporter of that from the, the very first days of your career. Why was it important for you to to push for equality? Well, because they they were at least as good, and my staff was over fifty percent female, all always. And I pushed for women on boards too, when when it wasn't very popular to do so. That's an important part of our our career. I mean, we're we sell con to consumers, and over fifty percent of our people are are women. So why wouldn't we have them? always represented in every form. Phil, you share a lot of personal stories in the book, and one of them is about the stroke that you that you yourself suffered, and, and you get very candid uh, in the book talking about how you don't often share, but you hope that the, the candor of sharing helps other people who are going through the same thing. And for you, it was the psychological impact of the stroke. Yeah, it's a terrible thing. I would never wish a stroke on anyone. It, it's, it's, it, you almost die with a stroke, so... Coming back is hard to do, really hard to do, especially when you can't walk, you can't talk, you can't think, you can't speak, you can't write. Those are all the things that happened to me. And um, so, you know, you just rely on friends and you just keep working at it and working at it. I took quite a bit of time off to, to get there because, and I was sl sleeping all the time too. It's, it's a terrible thing, strokes. Phil, we're glad you came back. We're glad that you wrote the book and you shared your journey um, because it's a, it's a great read if you're looking for something heading towards Christmas. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much.